Hello students, welcome to the memo unit. Myself with the chemi or biology SME. So now coming uh, to this uh, video lectures. So we have Brahmastra test series six, right? So based on Brahmastra test series, we are going to have a revision classes where I'll be revising all the six chapters. So one is living world, biological classification, sexual reproduction and flowering plants, plant kingdom, animal kingdom, and human reproduction. So I'll try to complete the very, very important aspects in just one lecture. Okay. So yeah, have concentration and be with us till the end of the video. So the very first chapter is living world and I'll try to finish up with an one, uh, one slot. Yeah. So yeah, what do you mean by Leaving word. Cool. So coming to the leaving world, the very first thing that they can ask you in the need is about the total number of species which has been described. So what is the total number of species that they have described till now? So that is the number of species that they have described, the, that the biologists know and uh, presently they have described, it normally ranges between 1.7 to 1.8 million of species that has been described. And this species diversity is actually referred as a biodiversity or the number of type of organisms which is present on the earth is actually called as biodiversity. So these basic points you should know. So there is a need, uh, since there are many organisms, right? Like, and they have different names uh, based on their locality. So from area to area or place to place, the number, the naming also gets changes. So therefore there is a need of standardizing the living organisms, right? I mean, the name of that living organism such that that particular species or organism is known by the same name all over the world. So this process is actually called as nomenclature. So nomenclature is nothing but your once you have given a proper name to one specific organism. So that name has been accepted universally, uh, universally by all the biologists, botanists everywhere. Okay, by all the scientists, and that is the common and a very proper name which has been uh, described in all over the globe. So this nomenclature or naming is only plausible when we describe them in a correct way. Like when the organism has been described in a correctly. And we know that um, to which organism the name is attached to. So this is called as identification. So what do you mean by identification in sense? First thing is you need to identify the organism. So how you are going to name an organism is one by describing that organism correctly and identifying that organism. So this is actually called as identification. So for plant and there has to be a certain uh, institution or certain, you know, uh, which is going to provide this all uh, rules and regulation, right? So it's not randomly, I cannot go and name a specific plant or animal based on the scientific way or, or something. So there has to be particular institution or particular organization which is going to ensure the scientific name of the organisms and they are also going to set a proper you know rules and regulation set of rules and regulation so for plant it is actually the icbn which is nothing but international code for botanical nomenclature this is very important because i guess there are like i guess you already know this thing that many question has also been asked from this two particular thing that is international code of botanical nomenclature so this uh, organization is going to provide the scientific name okay so to the plants so whereas if you ask for animals then uh, it is the iczn that is nothing but international code for zoological nomenclature so these are the two organization which are going to ensure the proper naming of the organisms yeah. So this is all about uh, the naming of organisms. So then there is a set of, uh, you know, once the naming has been done, how they are going to name. So the biologist uh, has to accept the naming universally. That means uh, entirely they have to accept the proper naming. So how do you name them properly? Through the scientific mean. Okay. So by knowing the organism and with the proper scientific uh, evidence and uh, 
you know, a rules, regulation, set of rules and regulation, we are going to name the organism. So we are going to, we in sense, the biologist or anyone who named them in a very scientific way. So the two components are considered. So what are the components? One is generic name. Generic is nothing but the genus name. And the another one is specific epithet or the species. Right. So these are the two, uh, you know, very important components that they are going to keep while naming the living organism. So when you are, and uh, since we are actually using the two components here for the naming, right? So that's why we normally call it as binomial nomenclature because we are using two components. One is generic name or genus name and the another one is the species. So by considering these two components, we are trying to name the particular organisms. Hence it is called as binomial nomenclature. And the system of naming was actually given by Carolus Linnaeus. Okay, so Carolus Linnaeus was the one who was uh, who gave the proper naming of this organism. So the naming system uh, found it very convenient. For example, uh, if I consider the Mangifera indica, see this is not in a uh, italics because I just wanted to show you like very first thing. So when rules and regulation comes, I'll say you how it has to be uh, you know typed when it comes to uh, you know, writing or texting form and all. But right now, you just consider this thing that as we have here Mangifera and we have Indica. So Mangifera represents what here? Genus name and Indica represent what? A particular species or the specific epithet. So here we have two components and based on these two components, we have named the mango, right? We have named the scientific name of mango. So therefore, uh, it is called as binomial nomenclature. So this is all about the binomial nomenclature. And there are a set of rules and regulations for binomial nomenclature also. Actually called as universal nomenclature. That means we have a universal rules for nomenclating a particular organisms. So what are those, what are those universal rules, right? So one thing is we have set of four rules basically. So the very first rule is the biological name are generally uh, they are in the Latin word and they are actually while you are writing you write them in the italics format. Italics format is somewhat it will be slant okay. Well if you see them uh, like you have already seen in the textbook and all. So it is somewhat slant in condition. Then they are Latin. Uh, basically, they are actually always, you know, they are being derived from the Latin. So irrespective of origin, that means if you find uh, or if you discover any species like it, uh, it could be plant, animal, insects, birds, whatever it is, irrespective of, spe uh, you know, origin, like if it is from India, it doesn't matter. If it is from any other country like Australia, it doesn't matter. America, it doesn't matter. But while you are giving the scientific name, so that it, uh, there, uh, you know, it should always, the name should always be derived from the Latin itself and it should be written in italics. So that is, uh, you know, somewhat it has been benchmarked. That means it is a kind of set rule condition. Then the second rule is the first word, uh, you know, the of this biological name, it always represents the genus name and while the second component will always denotes the specific epithet or the species name this is the second rule third set of rule is both the word like but the biological name when you are and written that means while, while you are writing make sure that uh, uh, they need to be underlined separately like if you see the mangifera indica here what i have did is i have i have underlined it separately right so uh, this is separately i have underlined and uh, Indica, I uh, have underlined it separately, right? And uh, while you're printing, uh, it should be in a italics form. So if you can see this and this, you can easily identify it as somewhat straight and it's somewhat slant. So that means while I, uh, during the printing or text tech, it was been italics form. I have kept that in an italics form. So that means if that, uh, that, that indicates, uh, this itself indicates that they are actually the Latin origin. Okay, and this is the third set of rule. And the fourth set of rule is while you are denoting uh, the genus name, that is the very first word, uh, genus name, the starting letter will always be the capital letter, like uh, M is capital here 
and the second component that is the species name with uh, which is the second uh, word it is denoting right it should always starts with small letter that means uh, here i have indicated in the small letter so and this is followed everywhere this is followed by every naming so this is another important point so these are the basic four rules okay like you need to follow so uh, this is all about the universal rule of nomenclature See, there is another very important point that we need to consider. So basically, uh, here they might ask you based on statement, based on some uh, arrange the following in their uh, respective order or something. Those kind of questions will be asked or statement based questions will be asked. So another important point that you need to understand is while you are writing the, uh, you know, naming of the organism, where... Uh, the author name also appears. So where the author name appears, why the author name should appear because as a credit, that means this specific organism has been identified and it has been named by this specific author. Just to give a credit. Okay. So we also write an author name. For example, this Mangifera Indica. So here what happens is I have also written the Mangifera Indica Lin. So Lin is nothing but here the last word of the uh, you know, binomial nomenclature. After the nomenclature, the last word, uh, you know, will be always the author name. So this indicates that this Mangifera indica, uh, that is the specific author, uh, sorry, the specific organism. So this is actually being described by the lineage. Okay. So this has been identified or this the scientific name has been uh, described by the lineage. So this is all about the rules and regulation uh, while you are setting the binomial nomenclature. So I hope this is clear to you all. Yeah, cool. After the set of uh, after the set of rules and regulation that we have seen for nomenclature uh, for the nomenclature that is for the scientific uh, naming. So here are certain things. So that is, once the classification is actually a process by which anything is grouped into a convenient category or something called as you can easily observe them just by observing a specific, uh, you know, person, you can easily classify that specific organism. Suppose you say a boy and a girl. Okay. So you now how can you, uh, you know, classify them? based on their physical appearance, based on their convenient category. So which is able to convince us, right? So in that way, we are going to group them as boys and girls in the same way. There are a set of rules. Like if we recognize, how do we recognize a group of organisms such as plants, take plants and animals, right? Or if you take something called... Uh, Yeah. So if you take something called, uh, you know, dogs or cat or insects. So based on that, uh, you know, uh, convenient categories will be able to group them into their specific, uh, you know, groups uh, or specific. Uh, uh, what do you say that uh, spec a specific phylum, kingdom, whatever it is. Right. So based on what? By recognizing some of the convenient category. So suppose if we associate them and this term is associated uh, with the organism as grouping. Okay. So that means we are actually grouping the specific uh, living organisms or any organisms based on their convenient category. So for example, if we take up when I talk about our mammals, so how do you recognize mammals? So you'll only think about mammals will be having external ears will be present and their body will be covered by hairs. So in that way, you'll be able to recognize mammals. So likewise, when you see plants, right? Uh, if I if we try to talk about wheat, so what happens? A picture of wheat only comes to your mind, right? So when uh, not a uh, rice or some other plant won't come in your uh, mind. In the same way, if I'm talking about dog, the picture of dog only comes to your mind, not like, uh, you know, something cat and uh, other uh, animals picture won't come. So how you are able to recognize based on their convenient category, based on its physical appearance or morphological appearance, you are actually grouping the organisms, okay, separately, right? So this is actually called as grouping. And that gives you a specific knowledge about the organisms to study. So this, the scientific term of these categories, like you are going to categorize these organisms, right? It is actually called as taxa.
So taxa can be uh, indicated uh, at its different level. For example, plants, okay, it also forms a taxa. Wheat is also a taxa. Rice is also a taxa. Similarly, if you go with an animals, mammals is also a taxa. Dog, they all comes, they all represents a specific or particular taxa. Like we know that the dog is a mammal and mammals are animal. Therefore, animals, mammals, dogs and all, right? They come under one specific group now. So that means they are representing a taxa at their own different level. So based on the characteristics, all the living organisms have been classified into different taxa. taxa. So this process of classifying, okay, of the living organisms based on their uh, external or internal structure, appearance and all, is actually called as taxonomy. This is very important point, okay. So what all the futures they are going to consider while they are, uh, you know, classifying the organism is, one is external structure, internal structure, along with structure of cells, it could be its developmental process that is embryonic developmental process. As you can see, from organism to organism, embryonic developmental differs. Like in fish, you'll see some other kind of embry uh, embryonic development. In insects, you'll see different. In birds, you'll see other kind of embry uh, embryonic development. So in mammals, the embryonic development is quite complex. So in this way. And also their ecological information, that is where this particular species is uh, living. And what is its kinds of nutrients based on all these things, right? So they are been classifying the organisms, okay? And this is very essential points for the study of the modern taxonomy or modern taxonomic study. This is one thing. So what all uh, the taxonomy consists of? So it consists of one thing is, this is again very important because many times I have observed one question was been asked on this particular topic. That is characterization. So what are the process of taxonomy? While you are, while if I want to define it, it is a taxonomy has been given. Like what are the condition? One thing is, first thing is characterization. So first thing is you are going to characterize the living organisms. Then after characterizing the living organism, you are going to absorb the living organism. That means you are going to absorb the organism. After absorbing them, uh, you are going to identify them. Okay. The one is the characterization. The second one is identification. After identification, once you have identified, so you are going to classify them, right? You are going to separate them. That means classification. After classification, what you will do? So now you have a specific, uh, you know, a, a, a one individual from a group. Now you got the individual organisms. Now you will be uh, easily able to give a proper name for them. That is nomenclature. And these are the process for the taxonomy, right? So that means first thing that you need to remember when it, it comes to the taxonomy question is, first thing is characterization, then identification, then classification, and the last one is nomenclature. So these are the four things that you need to uh, keep this in your mind. Like just remember this thing, that is CICN. So when it comes to classify a taxonomy, CICN is nothing but first thing is characterization, identification, classification, and nomenclature. So CICN can be remembered. Cool. Yes. So this is actually like you are studying a taxonomy. This branch is actually referred to as the systematic. Okay. So there is a specific branch where you are actually referring, uh, studying the taxonomy. So that is actually called as systematics and the word systematics is also been derived from the Latin word, which is nothing but the systema, which means systematic arrangement of the organism. Okay. Then uh, we know that uh, uh, Linnaeus, the one who, uh, you know, he came up with this uh, nomenclature that is binomial nomenclature uh, structure and he has published his work and the title for his publication was Systema Nature. Very important point. Okay. So he published his work and it was named, the title of the uh, of his publication was named as Systema Nature. Right. Then the scope of the systematics was been later, you know, enlarged. 
and they included this identification, nomenclature, and classification. And uh, the systematics uh, also, when you are studying a systematics, you also account with the evolutionary relationship between the organism, that is, uh, between the present organism and the extinct organism, or in between the organisms which are still exist okay so that that there you are also studying the evolutionary behavior and evolutionary characteristics between a uh, kind of relationship between the organisms so that is also get uh, included in this systematic study so then only you'll be able to identify the organisms then separate these organisms based on their characterization and all right and uh, once you done with these things now we will be able to remember or uh, it will also help in the further study of any new organisms also cool next so the very first thing is the taxonomical categories so what do you mean by taxonomical categories now see taxonomical categories in sense uh, basic thing is when I'm talking about the classification, right? So classification is not a single process. I mean, uh, it's it doesn't involve a single step, right? So when I'm talking about the classification, it has specific hierarchical steps. So each steps, you know, it normally represents a specific rank or specific category. So since the category or the rank, okay, is a part of overall taxonomical arrangement, so it is the call, it is actually called as the taxonomic category. Yeah. And all the category together, they constitutes this taxonomic hierarchy. So once you bring up all this taxonomical rank, that is all the rank together, all those, uh, for example, you are grouping the organisms. Like suppose you say you have a college, right? So college uh, students belong to one specific college. Again, in that college, you are going to differentiate student based on their grade, 11th class and 12th class. Again, in 12th class, what you are doing is, again, you are bifurcating students based on section. Suppose, say, A, B, C section. Then, in the A section, again, you are differentiating uh, the students based on their gender. That is, boys, girls, right? So, from what was your very first initial part was, so you have uh, this uh, college was there next to the college. What you had, you had sec uh, you have uh, grades after the grades section after the section gender. So this this uh, you know uh, actually represents a specific hierarchy and from rank that is you are actually taking from the uh, college to the gender. That means you are whether a boy or a girl. So this follows a specific rank or specific category. All over together, they form what? Taxonomical hierarchy. Okay. So this is very simple. I hope you are, I hope this is clear. The concept is clear with you. Taxonomical category, taxonomical hierarchy. Uh, it's clear, right? So taxonomical category is the, the same thing about one specific thing. And taxonomical hierarchy is like once you combine this all thing, it uh, represents, it constitutes the taxonomical hierarchy. So each category refers to the unit of classification. In fact, represents a rank and in common it is termed as taxon. Clear? So taxonomical study of all known organism have led to the development of one common category such as uh, now it comes kingdom which has a very large uh, you know uh, uh, thing to study after kingdom it follows phylum or division and then for uh, after the phylum or division we have class then order family genus and the last one is species okay all organisms including the plants and animal kingdom have the species as their lower category so that means all the kingdoms, uh, what will be the very lower category? It will be the species will always be the lower category. And what will be the higher category? Kingdom. See, complex will be more when come from the lower category to higher category. Complex will be more. Like if you are moving from the lower category to higher category, it becomes very tough. I mean, if you are actually studying about one specific, uh, you know, a student in the class, it's easy. Now you can easily say that, okay, this is a student, he's a boy. 
he he is uh, white in color he is somewhat uh, medium in color he is intelligent he is good in biology these are specific characters you can say now if i want to define the entire class entire boys with uh, and uh, i'll ask them to write an essay on one particular page it becomes very difficult because i need to summarize the entire boys together and if i ask entire college to write a summary on entire college students again it becomes very difficult for me but it is it will be very easy to write on a one specific person because physical appearance on all if i want to write okay so it becomes very easy for me i can write on his eyes nose i can write on his hair color his uh, you know all over behavior his mark score everything the same way so the here what happens is from the lower category uh, if you move from the lower to the higher category what happens the complexity becomes more that's what i just wanted to say you okay so this is it so first lower category is always been like species after that genus then family order class phylum or division and kingdom and remember always i'll be considering two things that is one is species and another one is genus while you are giving binomial nomenclature okay so yeah this is all about your taxonomical category this coming to the species with the hierarchy like uh, from i'll go with this from uh, decreasing order to increasing order that is from your lower taxa to the higher taxa or category okay so coming to the species as you can see that species when i'm talking about the taxonomical studies okay uh, they consist of a group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities as a species that means what you can see is one specific similarities like just by seeing that specific animal you can say that okay this is this that means you have a very defined characters okay uh, in which you can say them as they belong they are this individual something like that for example if you consider this uh, mangifera indica which is the mango here then solanum tubersum which is potato here and the panthera leo which is lion here okay so now what happens is you can easily differentiate them right because this is something animal and the potato this is something vegetable and this mango which is something a fruit so just by seeing one specific uh, the those organisms or those uh, individual you can identify them majorly okay so that specific character represents the species okay that is what they have uh, explained in the next line also so each genus may have one or more than one species see remember when i'm talking about genus so genus can have more than one species but each species will be having only one genus this is another very important okay so if they are morphologically similar the genus might have more than one species for example if you consider uh, some panthera i mean so panthera is actually what it is the genus okay so based on their characteristics they can have number of species like even though it's panthera they have many species like uh panthera leo panthera tigris and all so the leo and tigris you know they are species so that means they are only one this is one thing so panthera has another specific epithet called as tigris that is nothing but species and solanum includes species like nirgum as well as melongena so like see this thing when i'm talking about solanum so it is again a genus but it has around two three species okay and human beings also we belongs to a, a sapies group okay so sapies here it is what it is whether it is the species or genus it is genus so where we belongs to sorry Uh, okay sapi is whether it is a species or it is genus it is actually uh, the species right 
So where Homo is actually the genus. Yeah, okay. So Homo is actually a genus. That means Homo sapiens. Where Homo is a genus, sapiens is a species. So because of what? That's why the scientific name of the human beings is called as Homo sapiens. It is very simple. Like a species, and since you are in a classroom, class, suppose say class A. So in class A, there are boys and there are girls, right? So again, you'll consider boys, right? So there are many boys. Suppose say there are 21 boys and out of 21 boys, you can easily identify uh, Rathik. That's me. Okay. I'm just giving you an example. So here, boys is actually what? You can call boys as genus, where Rathik is species. Okay. So boys can have many, like there could be Rathik, there could be Satvik. Okay. Something like that. There could uh, even be Nishant. So these all are in one class. Okay. So that means boys... So we all will like when it comes to boys, we all comes in account of boys. Okay. But when it comes to individual, Rithik is individual, Satvik is individual, Nishant is individual. So this is what species represent. Clear? Next concept is the genus. I mean, after species from lower hierarchy to the hierarchy, so genus will come. So as I told, uh, before that genus, they compress a group of what? Relative species, which has more characters in common. Okay. So then we now group them as genus. For example, you have the potato, brinjal. They too belongs to two different species, but they belong to one genus that is Solana. Same thing like uh, Leo, Paradise. Tigress, they all belong to different species, but they, they, they have, they share a common future. So they can, right? So that's why uh, they come under the genus what? Panthera. That means they have one common genus that is Panthera. So this is another thing. Okay. So even uh, this is one point. So can you name uh, one specific example or question will be asked uh, in a tricky way? That is like why can't a uh, cat will not be included here. So here what happens is the cat, you know, it goes with the genus differs from another genus. Like what happens is uh, the cat genus differs from the this panthera and the paradis and the tigris genus. So that's why they are being kept separated. This thing I'll be explaining in the coming part that is family. See, let me say, like when I'm talking about a family, uh, in general, it is actually a group of relative uh, people, right? So with less or uh, less number of similarities as compared to the genus and species. So when I'm talking about species, it is one particular individual. So when I'm talking about gen uh, genus, it is a group of similar individual. So when I'm talking about family, so family as a group of related genus, but, but still with a very less similarities. Okay. So in what way can I say? So families are characterized uh, based on the vegetative reproductive futures of plant species. For example, if you take an example of plant, there are three different uh, genus you will see. Or uh, where one is Solanum. Petunia, then Datura. So these are the three different genus, but they are placed under one uh, family that is Solanaceae. Okay. So among animal, if you take like Panthera, then you have uh, Lion and Tiger. Okay. Leopard. They all are having one common, that is what you say that genus. Where but this cat that is Phyllis, okay, it has different genus. But still they are being placed in one common family that is Felida. Okay, so these all are aggressive carnivores. Why they are, uh, why they are under same uh, genus? Because pan, 
leo tiger leopards and all you know they are aggressive carnivores with complete uh, certified whereas cats you know they are somewhat omnivores also so now we are getting based on their food habit and based on their vegetative and reproductive features also we can uh, you know we classify them based on its size morphological structure also we classify them similarly if you observe the features of dog as well as cat what happens you'll find somewhat uh, very 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 common or similarities and differences as well as so therefore they are being separated they are kept separated in different families like if you take cat they come under felidae when it comes to dog canida so that's why what happened they comes they they became one when it when it comes to order for example see if you see about the species genus family they are actually based on number of similarities in them right but in order if you take they come into somewhat higher taxonomical category and they are been identified based on the aggregates of characters for example if the family resembles the same okay if the family not the individual if the family has somewhat same characters they are brought in one specific order uh for example if you take a plant family like convolvulaceae and solanaceae so they included in the order called polymosile which mainly based on the floral character and when you are coming with the animal order right carnivores includes family like uh, felidae and the canidae so they comes in one specific order so this is all about the order the next one is the class so this category includes what now related order it's very simple from individual person to number of people to number of uh, you know students in the class to number of classes or section in the college to one particular college you are getting for example i had i told number of boys then boys as well as girls like you have boys here and you have girls here so one specific person now from that one specific person you are differentiating them into boys and girls now together it makes what one class and again there are there will be other classes also so together it makes what one uh, standard that is 11th stand 11th or 12th standard something like that and together make one college so the same way so now what you are doing when it comes to classes now you are seeing only similar relations between order okay so some what similarities between the orders so if they show similarities they come under one specific class for example order primate like we have monkeys gorilla gibbons right which is placed in the same class called as mammalia along with there are even some of the carnivorous animals and omnivorous animals also like uh, tiger cat and dog uh, lion they all comes under the class mammalia itself so they are placed under class even though they are uh, what do you say that their order is different okay their families are different then the order is different but still they are being placed in one specific class so class mammalia as other orders also so the last the next one is the phylum so what about the phylum now again uh, based on the order if there are any similarities they are brought together in one specific phylum so phylum consists of fishes amphibians reptiles birds along with mammals also so the phylums normally comes with the higher category uh, whatever right so they all are actually called as phylum so based on common features which are present like presence of notochord and dorsal hollow neural system nervous systems okay so they all comes under the phylum chordata and if the nervous system is not there or less developed notochord is not present then they come under the phylum non chordata this is basic differences so in case of plants and animals like you'll again see a uh, you know uh, separate division also uh, you will be seen
So phylum can also be called as division. Okay. So phylum or division. Like in case of plants, when I'm talking, so classes with a few similar characteristics are assigned to higher category called as division. So this uh, phylum we are actually subjecting to what? Animals. Okay. Or insects, whatever it is. Okay. Which have chordates and non-chordates. Something like that. Whereas in come to plants, you will be ha you will be saying it as division rather than uh, saying something talking about phylum. So coming to the kingdom, all the animals, uh, you know, they belong to one specific kingdom that is called as kingdom animalia. Whereas if you take plants, right, they comes under a particular kingdom which is called as kingdom plant. Okay. So, this is it about what? Kingdom. So, in the same way, there are other kingdoms also. I mean, uh, you, you'll actually find five kingdoms, basically. One is you'll actually see the Monera. Then you'll also see the Protesta. Then you'll see the Fungi. Then plant the, uh, plants and animals, right? So, and this is where you will uh, see the five kingdom system of classification in biological classification uh, chapter. So this is how you are going to categorize them. So can you just uh, say me just in a brief revision part kind of thing. This is very important. I mean, this chart is actually very important. You have to mug up this chart because match the following or uh, choose the correct appropriate one could be asked from this chapter. It's uh, this uh, map one thing. So make sure that you mug up it or you remember it. Okay. This is one thing. So basic thing you need to uh, focus is about classification, naming of organism and rules uh, which are related for the binomial nomenclature, universal rules and what are the organizations which are going to take care of this uh, naming. So what do you mean by taxa, classification, then uh, about the taxonomical category where you come with the species. Right. So what do you mean by species? Then the genus, then the family. After family, you have what? Order. After order, you have class, then you have phylum. Or uh, that is called as division. And the last one will be kingdom. How do you remember this thing? Like if you are finding very tough to recognize this definition and all just remember a college you have a college okay one specific uh, one specific person in a class okay one student then you'll go with boys or girls then uh, coming to the class after class you will have sections like class one class two class three kind of sections so after sections you will have in grade like 11th or 12th grade after grades you will have like entire college right so in the same way so when i'm talking about the species you are actually uh, identify based on the specific identity just like you can easily identify the one specific student now we are going to, when I'm uh, talking about the species to the genus, what happens? You are talking about similarities in the species. Then in family, similarities in the genus. When it, is com when it comes to the order, similarities in the family. When it comes to classes, similarities in the order. Phylum or division, again similarities in the class. Finally, the kingdom, where you will be considering presence or absence of the notochord and uh, develop the neural uh, you know system and all so this is all about the living world and where i have already covered the entire like basic concepts of the living world what do you have to concentrate more